Hello everyone, this is Luke the Apostate, and this is the next episode of The Christian Experience, where I talk about how the experience of the Christian is uncomfortably like the experience of the abuse victim. This episode will be talking about lack of empathy. For reference, once again, I'm reading from Nina Brown's Children of the Self-Absorbed, details in the description below, page 6. Lack of empathy describing a parent without it. She is indifferent to the impact of her critical, demeaning, and devaluing comments and remarks, but simultaneously expects others to be empathic to her. She constantly blames others for mistakes and what cannot be changed. Okay, there's two things I want to talk about. There's the story of Job, and I'm going to hit just the high points as it applies to this lack of empathy. And then I'm going to talk about how the Bible describes sin. Book of Job. Two things happen to Job that are very important, and then God is written as having a response. First thing that happens to Job, all of his children die. I'm going to repeat it. All of his children die. He has ten kids in the book, and they all die at once. That is tremendously traumatic. Second thing that happens to Job, he is covered in painful sores from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. He is suffering physically in a time without serious modern painkillers. And he suffers like that for some time. Okay, now God's response. It starts in chapter 38, and it's rather long. I will summarize. It says, I have the right to do whatever I want to you. And that goes back to last episode when we were talking about the entitlement. But God is talking to someone whose children died and has been sitting in tremendous pain. And his response is, I'm God, I can do what I want. That's lack of empathy. The other thing that happens is that in chapter 42, verses 12 and 13, God blesses Job more than he was before. Specifically, he gives him replacement children. As if, in the story, that makes up for the pain and the loss and the suffering of losing his children. And just to hit that high point of the critical, demeaning, and devaluing comments that Nina Brown talks about, Job 42.6, Job says, I despise myself. That's the response to lack of empathy. And, to double down on that particular trend, let's talk about what the Bible has to say about sin. I'm quoting here from Millard Erickson's Introducing Christian Doctrine, details in the description. I could probably do a series of videos on sin and how it deals with this idea of abuse and abusive language and all the tactics that an abuser uses, but we're probably going to see this come up over and over and over again in this series anyway. So Christianity talks about sins in black and white terms, and black and white thinking and absolute thinking is another thing that abusers do a lot of, and we'll be talking about that later. As far as sin is concerned, it's important to remember that Christianity says that even the smallest tiny mistake is equivalent to the worst possible thing ever. Psalm 143 verse 2 says, no one living is righteous, i.e., Everyone is as bad as it can possibly be. 1 Kings 8 verse 46 says, There is no one who does not sin. Romans 3, famous passage, the Christians use Romans to describe the nature of sin and salvation. It's called the Roman Road. It's always talked about in Christian circles. It says, There is no one righteous. There is no one who seeks God. They have together, remember about the belittling language, become worthless. So, in Job, God blames Job for the mistakes. In the doctrine of sin, Christianity demeans and devalues everyone in order to then claim that it can save people. This is typical of the language of the abuser and the tactics of the abuser on the abused. It is not healthy. So, 
Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe. And please, more than anything else, unlike the things I've described today, please be kind to each other.